Right, to Battleground Toronto now, where the John Tory campaign has been mixing it up a bit, perhaps to the surprise of the other campaigns, in the way it was done. Yesterday, the Tory campaign took a shot at front-running Olivia Chow by issuing an invite to the Toronto media to play a game of Twister Chow. It was a spoof of the 1970s party game Twister. In this case, you'd spin the board for what the Tory campaign called Chow's twisting answers on a given policy topic. Our friend Lisa Kirby joins us now from Toronto. Normally we ask Lisa about all things liberal, but today we're going to ask her a little bit about the Chow campaign. And uh, Let me ask you, Lisa, what did you think of this particular twistery kind of thing? Got people's attention, and usually you want to do that if you're running a political campaign. But it didn't get attention in the good way. I think you probably saw today that uh, journalists all across the Toronto area were, were calling it out kind of badly conceived. It was bad judgment. You know, what were they thinking? And I think one of the most interesting uh, signs of a of, of bad idea, what a bad idea it was, was that it drew attention to John Tory's own record of flip-flopping. You know, he has this almost decade-long record of saying one thing and doing another, including on uh, transit and how to fund it. So it was just, it was a bad idea, and I suspect that Mr. Tory was not very happy. And of course, those of us on uh, the Chow campaign, we had a little bit of fun with it ourselves, having uh, put out a release poking fun at what they had attempted to do to us yesterday. And not only the Chow campaign, I saw folks on the stint side uh, tweeting out things along the lines of the John Tory brand, you know, if there is one, and you can say it's a strength, is he's you know, dependable, a little bit moderate, sort of straight lace. He'll make a nice joke at the rubber chicken dinner. But he's not all about playing Olivia Twister. It works. And, he, and in fact, his Twitter account, I think at the time that this was going on, was tweet, trying to tweet out some serious stuff or talk about some serious transit stuff. So it, it, it worked a bit against the brand that you might be trying to create for John Tory. Absolutely. When you have three of your top campaign advisors kind of you know, twisting and writhing around on the ground, inviting people to ask you know, these kind of twister-esque questions about uh, transit and, and posting pictures of it on Twitter, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You know, you can't unsee that stuff. It was just, <laughs> it, it was, it, but it speaks to how his campaign has been going overall. It just kind of, you know, bad judgment, no ideas, vague. I don't think anyone around John Tory's campaign table ever thought that they'd be in this position uh, now. And of course, camp the campaign's a long one. We have six more months to go, but they've just been off to a terrible start. Uh, let me ask you about this long campaign, because I, I think there was a Toronto uh, columnist today that was suggesting that Olivia's feeling weird. She's, uh, or the cam it, it, it's looking like a weird campaign in this sense, that while Olivia's certainly a very credible candidate, it seems a little too scripted. It seems like Olivia's too canned and that it might be time to sort of let Olivia be Olivia a little more. I don't know if you have a thought about that. Well, Olivia is being Olivia. She's a very experienced politician and she's a very warm and charismatic person in general. And you know, we, we see it all the time from her. She's just really good at what she does and she loves this city. And she first ran for elected politics back in the 80s when she was a school trustee. And then, of course, when she ran for city council and was on Toronto City Council for a number of years in the 90s, and of course, representing a Toronto area riding for close to the last uh, last decade. So she knows the city, she loves the city, and uh, it is time for a new mayor. And many of us, including myself, think that she is the best choice for this city. As Again, we keep coming about this long campaign, which presents unique challenges for any of the campaign teams. And I guess uh, for yours in particular, there's Olivia, so far as I'm told by those in the know, Olivia is leading in the polls. Uh, she might have five, six, seven points up on Tory. And then you've got Rob, Rob Ford back, you know, around 25% holding steady, not really going anywhere. How do you hold a lead for such a long time? Or is that is it a tricky, tricky thing to do to try and hold lead? Because holding a lead is not, quote, showing momentum. Well, you know, it, it, you're right. It is a long campaign and people are going to have good days and they're going to have bad days. Uh, unfortunately for Mr. Tory, he's had mostly bad days since he decided to throw his hat in the ring. But with Olivia, it, it, it's no question that our main opponent is, is Rob Ford. And I think many of her policies speak to Rob Ford's base. And she has been the only candidate out of all of them who is consistently um, going after Ford on his positions. You know, the, his whole idea that he saved a billion dollars, which is a total falsehood. She's the only one really calling him out consistently. And she recognizes that he is a formidable opponent and she needs to work hard. 
uh, to win this thing, and she will continue to work hard over the course of the next six months. But right. it will be an interesting six months. Lisa Kirby, thank you so much. I'll be in our Toronto studios tomorrow for our big Ontario budget special. I'm going to inspect gridlock myself as I come from the airport. Thank you so much. Thank you, David.